My dear students, Dr. Ashwak Kaur here and as you are well aware, I have authored books for NEET PG, NEET DM, NEET MCH as well as some of the books for USABLE examinations, MRCP examinations and my lectures would be intended to get you right on the top there for your next examinations, DM examinations, MCH examinations, MRCS, MRCP, USABLE examinations. I hope my videos will benefit a lot. I will be presenting my things in a very easy, simple and palatable form for you. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot. My dear students, today our topic of reference is D. Georgie syndrome. And as far as D. Georgie syndrome is concerned, this is an important topic from the perspective of anatomy, to be very specific, embryology, from ENT, head and neck, immunology, respiratory medicine and endocrinology as well. Now going to the specificities of D. Georgi syndrome, we will be dealing with each and every aspect of these micro deletion syndromes, the category under which it falls today. Now as far as D. Georgi syndrome is concerned, it is a micro deletion syndrome and micro deletion means that not the whole chromosome but a part of the chromosome here gets deleted and overall if we can have a look at the board i have written something like cache 22 22 refers to chromosome number 22 and in fact d georgie syndrome causes micro deletion of long arm of chromosome 22 so a questions might be question or questions might be invariably asked it is a category of which syndrome that is micro deletion which chromosome affected chromosome 20 whether the long arm or the short arm and in fact it is a long arm of chromosome 22 so this is something about the genetic aspect of d georgi syndrome now going from an embryological perspective we know the pharyngeal apparatus in in the pharyngeal apparatus we have got the pharyngeal arches and the pharyngeal pouches and very important thing about the pharyngeal pouches is that there are these one two three four and five pharyngeal pouches and especially the third and the fourth pharyngeal pouch are very important the third and the fourth pharyngeal pouch are important in the fact that they lead to the development of the thymus and the parathyroid glands the third pharyngeal pouch to be specific leads to the development of thymus gland as well as inferior parathyroid and the fourth pharyngeal pouch leads to development of the superior parathyroid gland now in association with the pharyngeal pouches the pharyngeal arches also develop simultaneously and this d georgi syndrome as a whole is predominantly a mild development of the pharyngeal pouches but a small bit of contribution from the pharyngeal arches as well. Now, we give it the name as CATCH22, C-A-T-C-H-22. 22, as already mentioned, refers to chromosome 22. And what do we mean by C-A-T-C-H? Now, basically, C stands for congenital heart defects. What type of heart defects? I will be just describing it at a later stage. A stands for abnormal facies or facial dysmorphia. Now T, T stands for thymic hypoplasia and then C stands for cleft abnormalities like the cleft lip and the cleft palate and H stands for hypocalcemia or hypoparathyroidism. So C, A, T, C, H, 22. We come to know about what we mean by CASH 22. Now CASH22 is invariably used as an alternative to different clinical entities resembling the Georgi syndrome as well by certain people. Now, to go into elaboration, what are the types of heart defects, the congenital heart defects which we have associated with the D. Georgi syndrome? You have to remember basically they are predominantly outflow tract defects and what we mean by outflow tract defects are the defects like truncus arteriosus, transposition of great vessels, pulmonary atresia and defects of the 
aortic arch, the primitive aortic arch, and predominant among them are the truncus arterios, transposition of great vessels, and pulmonary atresia. So the congenital defects are there of the heart, which I just mentioned. As far as the abnormal facies are concerned, you know faces predominantly develop from the mandibular process, the maxillary process, and there is small development of the mandibular and the maxillary process. And we have got this hypoplasia of mandible as well as maxillary hypoplasia. So there are multiple hypoplasias associated with this defect and especially from a skeletal wave point, uh, point of view, we have got the hypoplasia of the mandible and the hypoplasia of the maxilla. And in addition to that, there are this cleft lip and cleft palate, the cleft defects which are associated with the DGRG syndrome. The spectrum of course can vary. Then we have got low set ears and an increased intercanthal distance, a term which we refer to as hypertilarism. So cleft lip, cleft palate, hypoplasia of mandible, hypoplasia of maxilla, low set ears and hypertilarism are some of the predominant facial dysmorphic features associated with this entity. Then we have the, the thymic abnormality in the form of again hypoplasia of thymus and that too can vary. Now as far as the physiology of thymus is concerned, we know that thymus is concerned with the processing of T lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are an important component of immunity and in case there is hypoplasia of thymus, the T lymphocytes will not be processed well and a neonat, a child will be presenting with immune deficiency. I mean to say repeated infections and what infections of what sort are we coming to that. So thymic hypoplasia leads to immunodeficiency. Now in addition to that, the types of infections which I just mentioned would be recurrent and recurrent infections of varying magnitude. Now, they can be presenting with repeated upper respiratory tract infections. They can be presenting with recurrent lower respiratory tract infections, the GI infections, as well as oral thrush, candidiasis, and a host variety of other infections. But recurrent infections would be very frequent in a neonate or a child. Now, we also discussed hypoplasia or mal development of the parathyroid glands. As far as the parathyroid glands are concerned, we know there are four parathyroid glands. There are two superior, two inferior, and they develop in relation to the third and the fourth pharyngeal pouches. What are pouches? The sacrilegious or bag-like structures, which are endodermal in origin, and from the third and the fourth, from the third develop the thymus and the inferior parathyroid, and from the fourth develop the superior parathyroid. So if there is a defect of the third and the fourth, there can be a combined parathyroid deficiency or hyperplasia. And parathyroid glands are well known for maintaining calcium balance in the body. The serum calcium levels, in addition to other factors, are regulated by the parathyroid glands. And as a result, a patient with hypoplasia of the parathyroids can present with hypocalcemia. And hypocalcemia can manifest itself in the form of muscular hyperexcitability as well as seizures and tetany. And a clinician well enough may demonstrate it by positive Chuex sign or positive Trozier sign along with irritability and other features which I just mentioned. So hypocalcemia would be a very important fa uh, factor in diagnosis of DGRG syndrome in a child with recurrent infections. Now, in addition to that, what we have now, these are some of the important clinical features of DGRG syndrome. I told you the clinical spectrum can vary and these findings can be subtle or they can be very severe. The severity depends on multiple factors. Now, how to approach patient with DGRG syndrome? As far as the, the manifestations are concerned, these is not, they cannot be treated by one approach only. There needs to be a multimodality approach to the patient, depending upon what presentation a neonate, a child will be having. Now, for example, he or she may be having recurrent infections. So that will be treated by appropriate 
maybe prophylactic antibiotics, antibiotics at the right stage of time, proper vaccination, immunoglobins or immune boosters. And that will be dealt by somebody expert in immunology. Now, as far as the congenital heart defects are concerned, they can be from a range I mentioned, and they will be treated appropriately by a cardiothoracic surgeon, an expert who will determine the type of defect, the severity of the defect, and whether really an intervention is needed or not. Now, hypocalcemia, it will be managed by uh, calcium supplements, vitamin D, or recombinant PTH, uh, whatsoever modality we have, depending upon the severity of hypocalcemia a patient is presenting with. In action, we have got uh, many, uh, I mean to say, immunological disorders, psychiatric disorders associated with this clinical entity. And as far as the cleft lip and cleft palate are concerned, they will be dealt by a uh, expert plastic surgeon or an oromaxofacial surgeon whatsoever wherein they will evaluate what type of a deficiency is the severity and whether a surgical reconstruction or surgical management is needed or not. In addition, they can be having speech problems and the speech problems will be dealt by a speech therapist who will do an appropriate speech therapy. The audiological assessment because they can be having malformation or hearing defects because of the malformation of the auditory ossicles and they will be dealt by an auditory expert. Uh, uh, in a nutshell, there needs to be a combined multimodality approach in treatment of patients with D. George syndrome. Uh, I hope that this much quantum of knowledge is helpful and significant for you to remember what would be asked of this clinical entity from you, whether it is in the NEET PG examinations or the upcoming next examinations or the uh, postgraduate examinations of higher quality like the super specialty exams or relevant ENT examinations or even during your MBBS course. I hope that you will revise those points with utmost concentration and uh, go through the uh, video again and again three times so that these fundamental points should be here with you.